Hi, I'm Kristen Arvaez and I work for Invertec Drives. Today I'm going to show you how to connect and commission an Invertec E3 drive. This information is in the handbook, on the web, and as well as in the built-in help card. Connect the supply to the E3 at the top here. Check you have the right drive for your supply. As E3 drives are available for 230 volts single and three-phase supplies, as well as 400 volts three-phase supplies. Incidentally, a separate range of drives are available for single-phase input motors, but here we will stick with the usual three-phase motors. Connect L1 and L2 for single-phase supplies. And always connect an earth or ground to the drive, not only for safety, but also for electromagnetic compatibility compliance. The drive will need fusing or similar protection as well. Take a look at the manual for this information. Connect the motor to the E3 at the bottom. Many motors can be connected in star or delta for different supply voltages. Check the motor is correctly connected for the output voltage of the drive. In this case, the motor is delta connected for 230 volts, three phase operation. Connect U, Connect V and connect W to the corresponding motor terminals. The motor will run clockwise looking on shaft if correctly connected. Always use screen cable from the drive to the motor because the high voltage and the high switching frequencies in this cable can easily cause interference. Air the motor locally and through the cable connection as well as the screen. Now for the controls. Connect and enable switch to terminals 1 and 2. You always need to make this connection even if you are controlling the drive from the built-in keyboard or from a serial link. A simple wire link can be fitted if necessary. Now connect a pod to 5, which is 10 volts, 6 analog input, and 7 node volts. The default setting on the analog input is 0 to 10 volts which sits here, but you can choose many other settings such as 0 to 20 milliamps or 4 to 20 milliamps. Now it's important to set the motor parameters. It's important to set these parameters so the drive can protect the motor and also give the best performance and efficiency. Press navigate for a couple of seconds to access the parameters. Scroll with up or down arrows to the parameter you need to access. Here we can see parameter 7, the motor voltage. Press navigate again to access the parameter value, which is already set to 230 volts, so we don't need to change it. Press navigate again and then scroll to the next parameter, parameter 8. This is the motor current rating, which is important for protection. The rating plate on this motor says 1.9 amps for delta connection, which we have here. Set that using the up and down rows. Press navigate and scroll to parameter 9, which is the motor frequency. This already matches the motor, so we don't change it. Now go to parameter 10, which is the motor RPM. If I change this from 0, the main effect is to change the display to RPM. I will set it to what's on the motor rating plate, 1400. That's it. A long press on the navigate button will take you back to the starting display and we can start the drive with the enable switch and adjust the speed with the pot. The display is currently showing the output frequency. With the drive running, a short press on the navigate button will allow you to see the RPM, the output current or the output power. Of course, there is no load on this motor. If you get stuck, you can easily reset all the parameters to the factory settings by stopping the drive. Then, press up, down and stop buttons together for a second until PDEV shows up. Then, reset the drive with the stop button and start again. That's it. 
It's a simple easy drive to set up and use and will give years of service. It will probably pay for itself quickly with energy savings or improved process control, but that's another story. I hope this short video has been useful. Look out for other training videos to help you get the best of your Invertech drives. For more information, go to invertechdrives.com. Bye for now.